Hey guys, welcome back. So today we want to do part two to our alien pistol video. In the first video, we talked about the alien pistol. We did a little bit of shooting with it. We showed you many of the features of the handgun, but then we also promised in a future video to compare it to some of its peers out there in the industry. I want to preface this video by saying that neither myself nor Jason are competitive shooters. We're taking a look at these handguns from the perspective of being just regular shooters. Okay, so if you're a competitive shooter, you're going to look at these, gu these guns through a different prism than we're going to be looking at them from. We're looking at them from, you know, how ergonomic they are, how flat they shoot, how accurate they are, how easy are the controls to get to, which some of that, of course, translates into the competitive shooting world. But I just wanted to put that out there. So we brought the Alien out and we've brought out a Staccato 2011, which is a very popular competitive handgun and guns like it in the United States today. And then we've brought out a CZ-75 Tactical Sports, which represents a very popular competitive handgun, both in Europe and even catching on here in the United States. Jason has joined us. Jason has stepped out from behind the camera hey guys. Uh, to jump in front of it. And he has, along with myself, been shooting these guns quite a bit. And we're gonna start off talking about the Alien. So the Alien pistol is a pretty much new design based on some existing uh, ideas that are out there. In our first video, we talked about some of the inspirations we believe influenced the, the design of the handgun, and we're not gonna rehash that in this video, but we wanted to address a couple of the things that I saw in the comment section of the video. And one of the things that I saw in the comment section of the video from people that apparently are competitive shooters in Europe that are using this gun, uh, that the gun was unreliable after 500 rounds and that the gun the other issue is that the gun gets un, you know, unbearably hot after long shooting strings. And so those are a couple of things that we looked for while we continued our testing with the gun. Jason, I've spent a lot of time behind the trigger on the Alien. You've spent plenty of time, but not as much as I have. What are your takes on the handgun? What is it you like about the handgun? And what are your, you know, some of the concerns you have about the handgun? Some of the things you don't like about the pistol? Over the years, you guys have seen me use a lot of primary arms optics, everything from red dot sights to magnified optics. And why do I do that? Well, over the years, they've offered very good products for a very fair price. They have fast shipping, outstanding customer support, and that's why you've seen me using those products for so many years. If you guys would like to pick up a magnified optic like you see on this Daniel Defense Mark 12, you can pick up an optic like this one. Just put it in your cart over at pa.com or primaryarms.com, and if you use the code MAC at checkout, MAC at checkout, you'll get a free scope mount with your optic, and that goes for any primary arms branded optic. If you pick up an optic that has an integrated mount, use that code MACMAC at checkout and you'll get a free kill flash ARD for that optic. So please swing by and check out primaryarms.com. Yeah, well, some of the things I, I liked about the pistol was how flat shooting it was. I mean, it really is flat shooting. That low bore axis, the way the grip angle is and the way the handgun sets in your hand, it is incredibly flat shooting. I mean, so much so that you can literally watch through the entire recoil cycle, either through the red dot or using your iron sights, you know, your target and your hits and have fast follow-up shots with it. That is one thing I did like about it. The uh, The trigger was nice, had a little bit of creep to it, but not too bad. You know, it was very predictable, right? So you could have those fast follow-up shots to it. Reloads really quick on it because the mags seem to just seamlessly fall in and out of the thing with ease. I mean, not like it fell out while firing, just... It was really easy to insert the magazine into it. One of the things that I don't necessarily like about it, um, oh, I should say one more thing that I do like, is the fact that you can switch between the red dot and your iron sights quickly, like Legos. I mean, literally just pop it off and pop it on, and it's that simple. Um, but one thing that I did not like about it is it did. On long strings of fire, the thing would get hot. That is something that most certainly the pistol did do. Um, I didn't experience any malfunctions with it by any means, but the other thing that I didn't like about it was the real estate on the slide. The serrations are nice. They are deep, they are easily to access, but maybe with some training, it gets some used to, but with that red dot on there, I wanted to instantly grab the back of it, which I couldn't because the red dot was in the way. You had to go more towards the front of the slide and pull it. So it's just a little bit of odd, you know, odd for me in the way I shot handguns, but I didn't necessarily like the real estate that the slide offered me. So that's my take on the Alien Pistol. The sights are really, really good on the gun. And as Jason had mentioned, you can quickly and easily switch this gun to using a red dot. Now the kit that this gun came in 
had the red dot sight already in the kit and it's just a simple matter of replacing this top piece on the handgun and it's just held in place by one pen if you want more information on this alien pistol detail stripping things like that we definitely go into all that in our first video in the series this is your hammer all the guns on the table today are hammer fired handguns while the alien look striker fired it is not it just has an inverted hammer the red dot sight component you can just literally pop off the top piece with a single pen holding it in place pop on your red dot sight see this is that lego feature that i like right there right it's just it's that quick and now you're off to the races yeah. now what what he was saying and this is something a lot of people do myself included with red dot optics on sites or on handguns i should say is that i like to run the slide yep. by grabbing the front of the red dot sight that's a lot of real estate there to get your hand onto that can really help if you're in a hurry you know if if, if you're one of the uh, slingshotters you know you go you put a fresh magazine in it's really easy to hit that red dot sight as your hand comes back very gross movement not an option on this handgun and then when this is in place it covers up these rear serrations so if you're trying to to charge the pistol you have to get between you know the the frame and the red dot sight itself and grab that little tiny slide yep. which it has these really aggressive and really lengthy serrations up front so it's very easy to operate the handgun from the front part of the gun so it's a complete change of manual of arms for the gun the slide stop slide release i found was in the right spot so i think I. you did yep you yep. did as well magazine of course is in the right spot the gun does not have a safety so the other two pistols that we're going to talk about today have manual safeties this gun has no safety on it the safety being keeping your finger off the trigger it does have an inertial safety on the trigger the trigger is seat is steel or metal could be aluminum but like you said this gun after the fourth <clears throat> magazine of 17 rounds i was firing them as fast as i could it got hot. I mean, it got unbearably hot. Yeah, the heat soak was something too. Like, the, right, it was just as you let it, it sit start there, off here and it just get hotter, hotter, hotter. Yeah, and it got hot up here on the slide. It moved forward, but the trigger itself became unbearable. Wow, that's hot as heck. By that fourth fourth magazine, it's almost too hot to touch. If I had to load a fifth magazine and shoot it accurately, like slow fire it would be really painful because we measured the temperatures up north of 150 degrees keeping in mind folks at 140 degrees you can get a second degree burn yeah. that means blistering and so uh, that fact that it gets up to 100 plus 50 degrees is something that is of a concern now it does seem as though the engineers um, at Lago Arms tried to mitigate some of that because we did notice there's a little polymer square insert just on the top side of the trigger guard, but it's in a really bad spot because how I hold the pistol, my trigger finger doesn't even hit it. My trigger finger's coming down at an angle to the face of the trigger, and my trigger finger doesn't even hit that piece of polymer. I'm hitting the, the steel right here on the frame, which gets hot. Yep, that's what mine I, did my too. my finger is touching that metal trigger, which gets hot. I even found that polymer plate to even get just as hot as the frame it felt like so yeah it's almost we like touching it didn't that do polymer anything. it's like that's even getting hot i yeah. mean it really got hot and so that was a, a, a bit concerning of all the issues that i saw people talking about them on the internet that is probably the one that i would give the most credit to it certainly does get hot now for somebody like me not being a competitive shooter shooting it just going out to the range to shooting a couple magazines through it having fun knocking over steel plates i never noticed it I didn't notice that heat issue until I went looking for it. Right. And then I had to just keep running magazines to the gun until I discovered it. Um, the other issues that I saw people talking about, and I'm not discounting their reports, <clears throat> but the gun does ha has zero reliability issues. I had no issues with this gun. Uh, it doesn't get excessively dirty. It just works. The gun just kept cycling. We were using, uh, we've shot 124 grain RUAG, 115 grain, and we also 100, 124 grain Federal through it as we've been testing it, and the gun just digests everything. The gun has the lowest bore axis of any of the guns here. It's a heavy gun being all metal construction, but literally where my finger is is where the barrel is on the gun. With the other guns that we have out here, the CZ gets that down pretty low. CZs are known for a very, very low bore axis, and the 1911 is going to have a slightly higher bore axis. And there's a, there's a big debate on the internet whether or not that makes much of a difference. The weight of the gun, and I do believe the location of the barrel, lends itself 
to this gun being, of the three guns here, easily one of the most manageable handguns to shoot. And that's lacking a muzzle brake or any type of port that, like the Staccato has. No compensator whatsoever. So right. to be able to do with that handgun what you can with a compensated gun, it's pretty impressive. Because I think a lot of the reciprocating mass, there's not much given the slide is no. literally just like a Very couple minimal. halves really. There's really not much motion going on. And with that fixed barrel, it's pretty accurate too. And You're while using the red dot sight and then firing this thing in fast strings, I could see through the red dot sight. I could see the bullet hit the steel plate. The gun never jumped enough where I lost the dot, no. right? The dot just stayed there. It's like pop, 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 pop. The dot never moved. Now I've shot plenty of other red dot handguns, especially some of my smaller concealed guns. And that dot just disappears and you have to reacquire it when the gun comes back down. Not the case with this handgun. Right. So I would say that's pretty much um, the negatives to the gun is really just the heat. Everything else about it feels good. The controls are in the right spot. And it's interesting how it has the ability to mount a red dot sight. Yep. No, I agree. Trigger on that thing is outstanding. I'd say that's the second best trigger. Yes, yes, compared to what's up next here, which I think is the uh, the best trigger. The king. So let's go ahead and talk about the king. So the next handgun we wanted to compare it to. Now, keep in mind, the Alien pistol is by far the most expensive handgun here. Oh, yeah. It's the newest to the market. It's expensive. The price may come down. The one that we're testing that was sent to us by Lancer came with a full kit, came with the red dot sight in it, all that stuff. I would imagine if they make the guns just the guns available without the fancy kit, the price could come down and be more competitive with something like the Staccato, which is going to be in the $4,000 price range. Mm -hmm. So the Staccato, 1911, American classic. This handgun dominates the, the American shooting market has for, for generations not just decades, but for generations, the 1911 has been a highly competitive handgun. Lots of big names out there producing them. You know, Bill Wilson was a competitor before he was a gun manufacturer. Ed Brown, same thing. And so we wound up with guns like the Staccato 2011 series of pistols, which that's kind of, people use that 2011 to describe all guns that are pretty much in this configuration now. Yeah. And there are other companies that are making guns like this that are far less expensive, that literally look like the Staccato. Yeah, there is. And there's quite a few people that make guns that, that do that. And then there's quite a few people that make some that are completely like custom gun shops that are, right. you know, have their own thing. But this particular Staccato XC is actually quite nice. Yep. So right out of the box, this is a great competitive handgun. It comes cut with the mounts for any type of red dot sights you want on there. We have an SRO on this one. Uh, you know, it has that big, thick polymer grip. So you have, you know, metal and polymer mixed together on this particular gun. All the guns out here have nice, big magazine flare, you know, mag wells. So it's really easy to get the magazines into the gun. Um, the, this gun and the CZ uh, are a little bit different than the Alien. The Alien, we thought it was a little bit interesting. Even with the slide down in the full magazine, the magazine just popped right into the gun. Oh, yeah. Uh, with the other guns, with the full magazine slide forward, you have to push them in and hit them to make sure they lock because that magazine will drop out with the first round fired if you don't. Really weird how they've designed that magazine on the Alien. Yeah, with the slide closed on any of these guns, if you load them, you'd have to give it a good whap. But again, with the generally with you reload, it, the slide should lock to the rear and right. it should go in relatively easy. But that not Alien was issue. funny. It yeah, just not a major right issue, in. but it was just kind of weird. Like yeah. we we're holding the gun upside down, just dropping the magazine and goes click on a full magazine with the slide home. Like this is not normal. Yeah, no, it was pretty cool. Don't know how they accomplished that. But this is a nine millimeter. All the guns here are nine millimeter. And it has all the standard 1911 controls, guys. I'm not gonna break all that down for you. Some of the things that um, I, I like about the gun, first of all, I never, I'm a traditional 1911 guy. I like the single stack grip, the way the grips feel, but I will say that this thing feels very good in my hand. Yeah. But it's thick, it's just as thick as the Aliens grip, it's just as thick as the CZ grip. It just has the right amount of girth to it. Even though it's kind of blocky and angular, it still feels really good. Uh, being a 1911 snob myself and, I, and loving 1911s are certain things that I, I, I look for 1911s, good triggers and safeties. The safety on this thing is ambi, but very positive, no slop. You know that's on fire, you know it's unsafe. Uh, a lot of 1911s out there, it's just mush. And then there's movement, you know, in the in the selector lever and then it'll just mush back into the safe position and then it, it, it's a little bit of slop in there. Finally fit. That's just one of those things that takes hand fitting, the trigger on this thing. You know, it, it's your typical 1911 high-end trigger. Uh, it, it comes back, comes to a shelf. If you push past that, bang, no over travel. Very short, very audible reset. The Alien has more of a rolling break. 
has a little bit of staginess to it, not enough to make a difference. When you're shooting the gun, you literally won't notice it until you stop and try to look for it. You'll see a little bit of staginess in it, but it just kind of pushed back and then bang, it just goes off, right? This has very much that two-stage feel trigger to it. Hit a wall, bang, it fires. The thing that I don't like about this gun is because of its design, they had to do a lot of lightning cuts to the slide They've cut completely through the slide for the front serrations. They've done some really heavy serrations back here, taking a lot of material out, I think, to lighten the slide. And it has a very, very weak recoil spring in it. Generally speaking, with the 1911, I tell people never just drop the slide without a loaded magazine in it because it puts a lot of stress on that cross pin. Same is true with the CZ-75 or any cross pin gun. Browning high powers, don't do it. It's bad. You can break the cross pins over time. But with this gun, no magazine in it, all right? No, no rounds in the chamber, and I'm going to go ahead and push down on the slide stop, and it's just anemic. And, and to me, that screams, it's going to malfunction, right? But it hasn't. This gun's been shot a lot, mostly by you, and it's never malfunctioned. But just you would think the slightest amount of gump in there that would get in there, that would cause that gun to get even more sluggish and eventually just fail to go completely into battery. Hasn't happened. I think that's a miracle, but this is not a self-defense gun. This is a race gun. Right. So what's funny, funny that you say that, because I have fired, I mean, probably 1,500 rounds or more through that gun, and I have yet to clean it, literally took it right out of the bag and just started shooting the thing. So much so that there's so much carbon building up in that break that it's like, how are we going to get that out of there? But regardless, um, I have put this gun in other people's hands, and if they do do like a tight high thumb grip on it on that slide given the recoil spring that it has they can actually induce malfunction with the thing so and that's because that's preventing that weak spring from overpowering the pressure from their thumbs on the slide the way i hold the pistol that's a non-issue for me the way you hold the pistol non-issue for you but there are some shooters out there where that slide has been impeded in its motion because of the way their thumbs are resting on that slide but so kind of kind of show you guys what he's talking about so i i have a a lot a very thumb forward hold on a gun yep and but my thumb typically falls on the frame of the pistol some folks will have it fall up here and i can't get to the slide stop slide release but if you do that and you apply pressure with your thumb like if you draw this gun out of a holster you get too deep of a grip because you're in a hurry you're in a competition now i have my thumb the entire length of my thumb and and bit of my palm pushing and if i got that really deep grip and i'm trying to shoot fast because i'm in a hurry I'm going to basically make it so the slide, I can hold that slide with my thumb very easily. Yep. I cannot do that with my 10 millimeter. And that's what they ended up doing. They ended up like not allowing the slide to function and then they would have a malfunction. But the way I would hold it and the way you hold it, the way our grips are. Never happened. Was a non-issue. The gun was completely fine. I do know that one of the things that uh, I agree with you on it was the uh, slide stop slide release. It does sit like a little shallow in there you know like the the release portion pushing down was actually really really easy to do but the going up part sometimes when you're just because of the blockiness of the frame of this pistol it kind of gets in the way a little bit there it that's about the only thing i can ding it for and like like we're saying you know dings on these things it's it's not really dings we're not really right. saying like oh this is just a terrible pistol like no this is <laughs> these right. are incredible handguns you know? every one of these handguns is awesome i love yeah. each and every one of them we're not trashing any of these oh, guns no. uh we're just trying to give you guys the nuances of yeah. each of the pistols little stuff and know? i would agree so sometimes like when i go to lock the slide open this thing it'll take me a couple of tries i had the magazine in it it'll take me a couple of tries because that that slide stop, it, and you can buy aftermarket ones that would extend it just a little bit, but it's flush with the thick, the, the extra thick grip. It's flush with that. So you're pushing up and you're trying to, literally I'm trying to get it to lock there. And it took me three tries just to get enough meat on that. So yeah, I would agree that that, um, but that, again, that's something you can change yourself and, right. and make the gun your own. Right. With, um, but the, other than that, the gun, very flat shooting, it and the Alien are the two flattest shooting guns that we have. It, it's using, um, you know, a compensator, which is uh, different. It doesn't have any downsides, really, I would say, to a compensator, other than, you know, it's just blasting up in front. But right. in a competition setting, that's that's not an issue. Uh, compensators work really, really well, and it definitely complements that gun and makes it so flat shooting 
that just like with the alien with the red dot sight, you can watch your rounds hit the steel plate through the red dot yeah, sight. Follow up shots really fast with it. I would say the alien and the twenty, uh, the staccato XC here are neck and neck in terms of follow up shots. The this the staccato has probably the best trigger. Alien's second best. Yeah. And in terms of that, both fantastic guns. So. So let's talk about the last one. This gun is this is the CZ seventy five tactical sports. This is a very common, popular, especially in Europe, uh, competitive handgun. The higher end version of this would be called a Checkmate. Checkmate would have holes drilled in the slide, I'm sorry, in the frame, and then it would have a mount with like a Seymour sight on it. They, it's just a kit that they sell for a competition gun. Uh, and then they just kind of go down from there. The tactical sports is kind of down in the mid-level area of their competition handguns. So you'll see it have competition features like this really overly exaggerated magazine release. It has a very, you know, outstanding magazine well just like the other two pistols this really large magazine well that you can get uh, magazines into the gun very quickly and easily uh, you can if you want have these cut for optics but keep in mind it just has the tiniest of of real estate when it comes to wanting to operate the slide it's just so tiny because the rails ride inside the frame versus the uh, the 1911 being a completely different design, the Alien being its own design completely. Um, the rails on this thing are inverted, therefore you have very little to grab a hold of. But um, but the spring on this bad boy is nice and heavy. The guns are super reliable. The controls on this though uh, are, are where I run into problems with the gun. So both the slide stop slide release are a bit too far forward and high, and I have big thumbs. And then the safety lever is really just in the wrong spot. Now going on, it's harder for me because this little nub is too far forward and up. My thumb just brushes right past it. However, on the downstroke, it's very quick to come off and it is ambi. Same thing with the slide stop slide release. There's no way that I can keep my grip and hit that slide release. I just can't do it. So I have to do my typical reload where I insert the magazine, come up and hit it with my offhand to drop the slide or you can slingshot it if you want to try to grab that little dinky tiny short shallow <laughs> slide there ain't much there to right. grab guns heavy all metal construction a lot of weight out front and of the three guns that we have out here i would say this one jumped around the most had the most movement during recoil right shooting that particular gun it did it had a lot more a lot more jump to it you know there's no compensated to it there was no exaggerated grip angle there's a lot more moving mass of the slide so you definitely felt the recoil uh, a lot more movement in it the other thing is too, when they do those, you know, red dot sights that they put on there, there are companies that do mill the slide. So you can put like a traditional SRO, RMR, whatever you may want to plate on there. But when you do put one of those like Seymour sights that's mounted on there, a lot of these CZ models come with like a little charging handle that like yes. goes into the side here. So you can actually charge the gun because it just blocks everything. So you can't really get to the slide unless you use that little charging handle thing there. The other thing about this, can, you know, handgun, at least for me, is it did. The grip feels incredible on, like, all CZs. You can pick up any CZ, and they all just feel really good. The trigger. Yeah. The trigger on this guy was number three compared to the other two that we had out here. I would say that it's incredibly light, like, so much so that it'll just, you know, whoa. You know, yeah. Wow, that just went off, and I really wasn't, you know, trying to. Push you're just it that starting far. to get your sight settle in. You think you're taking up the slack in the trigger, right. but you're not. Bang, thing goes off. Like, whoa, it right. startles you. Because you may be looking for a wall, and it's not there. There's no, there's, there's no, no wall. wall. Just it's touch just... the trigger, and it goes bang. It's like two and a half, three pounds. It's very, right. very light. And the reset was all the way out. You had to, you know, take and release all the way out to get your finger out there to then be able to do the trigger pull again. And while for a single action trigger, it, it is a nice trigger. You know, I would mm -hmm. say the other two definitely have better triggers on them. Yeah, I found myself stumbling occasionally on fast rapid fire strings shooting the knockdown plates. I would stumble with that because it required a full release. Now, keep in mind, the trigger is only traveling a tiny little distance, yeah. but there's no take up on that trigger whatsoever. It's like as soon as you apply pressure, once you hit that three pound mark, bang, it's going off. It's not like the 1911 staccato where it comes back, you hit that wall, you know if you push any further, the gun's going bang. You you truly know what the gun's getting ready to do. You don't have that feedback with the CZ at all. No. So of the three guns here from a, and I'm gonna rate them and I'll let you do your, your rating. Of the three guns here, in terms of not being a competitive shooter, fun guns to shoot, the gun that I shoot the best and I have the best time shooting is the alien. I really enjoy the alien. 
we were just out what Sunday shooting for fun with some friends and we just kept going further and further back and hitting those little tiny steel plates with, with the alien. It just, it, the gun is just insanely accurate with its fixed barrel and has a really, really good trigger on it. I really enjoy the thing. However, if I was a competitive shooter, now keep in mind, I'm not a competitive shooter. So taking advice from me in this, this realm is probably not the best idea. I would take the staccato. I would say the staccato is the best of the three in terms of uh, competition type handguns. And the only reason I'm saying that is because the alien has that heat issue. And if you run long strings, that might become a problem for you. So out of mine, just, you know, the, the little experience I've had behind them, the alien in terms of innovation is my favorite. That is pretty cool. The way that this, the, the pistol is set up, I would have to say it's unique. It's fun to shoot. It's definitely a head turner for some. And when you put that gun in people's hands, they're like, wow, this shoot really flat, you know, and fast. But my absolute favorite, again, and I'm not an IT11 guy, but the, the staccato is the one that I was like, this is awesome for me. And I truly loved it. So staccato was number one for me. And that would be for if you were going to go into competition and even just, just for in fun terms shooting? of shootability. Okay. Right. Just in terms of shootability for fun shooting and things of like that, the staccato was my favorite. In terms of competition, I too would choose the staccato as well. That's pretty interesting. Definitely interesting guns. Uh, had a lot of fun evaluating these. Uh, I was really interested to dig more into the alien to find out, you know, if some of the comments I'd seen, uh, you know, in terms of the negative comments, if I ran into those problems. The only one being the heat issue, reliability. The gun has just ate everything I've put in it. Only ball rounds, no hollow points, not intended to shoot hollow points. It's not a defensive pistol. So I would say that the uh, the Alien is, is definitely, like you said, one of the most innovative, very easy to take apart. It's amazing how fast you can change sights on it. All that stuff, just an outstanding handgun. So yeah. I'd love to see what the yeah. firearms industry does with some of the design features of this gun and future guns. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best possible way to do that is to become part of our Patreon family. If you do that, you'll have early access to videos like this one. You'll have direct access to me. I answer all private communications. We have some other perks as well. Also, right here on YouTube, you got that little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Mash that join button, and you can support us here on YouTube in the age of demonetization. And last but not least, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 14 years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon.